Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Our text for today is the Old Testament reading, Deuteronomy chapter 18, verses 15 through 20. You'll find it on page 4 of your folder. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. There is discussion in this reading, as well as in our gospel reading, about authority, isn't there? And about, really, the power of the word. And who is it that gets to speak that word? Who is it that represents God and speaks for him then and now? Indeed, the people of Israel were frightened by the very presence of God. It was pretty awe-inspiring and a little scary. Of course, sinful man is always a little bit scared in the presence of pure holiness. But the Lord came down, and when he would meet his people, Except for the pillar of cloud and fire, the mountains where he met his people were always surrounded with smoke and thunder and lightning and the trumpet call and earthquakes and all of those sorts of things. It was a pretty frightening thing. They could not bear the word of God. But Moses was their intermediary, wasn't he? He was the one whom God had chosen to take his word to the Hebrews, to tell them that they were his people and he would gather them together and lead them out of slavery, that he would lead them to a new and promised land filled with blessings in abundance. Moses was that spokesman. And when Moses balked and said, oh, but, 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 Lord, I, 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 I can't speak. No, not, it's not me. No way. He said, fine, you're my guy, but I'll send Aaron to do the talking for you. I don't know if that ever really calmed Moses' nerves, but he obviously served as God's mouthpiece in a very big way. Moses was also the intermediary, wasn't he? Not only did he lead the children of Israel out with the power of God covering them and empowering them, but he also went and interceded for them before God. He took their requests to God. He spoke from God to them. And it is, no doubt, important for us to note that as a mortal man, how long will that last? God gives the promise that this sort of relationship will continue. He will raise up someone else from among the brethren, somebody who is a people from their people, a person that they would know. He would raise them up and use them in the very same way. They would not have to bear the word of God directly. They wouldn't have to be frightened in his presence. There would be someone who would intercede for them and who would speak for God and who would take their requests to God. This introduces the whole prophetic line. And yet, most importantly, it points forward to Jesus, the last and greatest of all the prophets, indeed, the fulfillment of the prophecies, the one who came to fulfill what God had promised so long ago back in the Garden of Eden when our parents had sinned before the consequences were announced. God spoke a word of grace and said, I will send a Savior. God's grace is shown to us in the way that he meets us. Here, God showed his grace to his people by providing for them someone who knew them and that they knew, someone who could speak on their behalf and speak to them as God's representative. That ultimately came in the biggest of ways when he spoke his word into flesh and sent his own son as that fulfillment of the promise. Yes, to intercede for you and for me and for all humanity and to speak with authority Here in this world, against evil spirits, teaching people, it was important that that ministry continue. And so Jesus then poured out his spirit. He anointed his people and sent the Holy Spirit on that day that the apostles could continue to take that message into the world. And that you and I as God's people called, enlightened, and sanctified, baptized into his family, 
that we would know the power of that same Spirit to live within us. That we would be able to go to the Word of God and study it. That we would have those who would be leaders among us that God had anointed to lead us and to help us to learn and that would intercede for us. That we would be able to go directly to God with all of our requests, with all of our fears and all of our hopes and our dreams. God is very gracious in coming to meet his people. He comes in the simplest of ways, in the ordinary folks. Preachers aren't any better or any different than anyone else. We're sinners just as you are. The only thing is that we've been placed in an office after we've been educated to be able to help to lead you. God has given us that authority through you because the power of the keys, the power of the church is not some institution somewhere, but it is her people gathered together in the name of Christ as the body of Christ. And it is through you that pastors and commission ministers like teachers and DCEs are called to serve among you as one of you. Yes, speaking on God's behalf and interceding on your behalf, but most importantly, teaching and leading you to be able to live out your Christian calling as a child of God, to go directly to him, to know his presence with you, to be filled with his spirit, as his word is spoken to you, not only through the word, but through the word attached to the means of water and bread and wine. And even there, God is very gracious, isn't he, in the way that he comes to meet his people. He comes to us in ways that are so simple and not scary that some discount them. How can the Lord be there? How can that do anything? But the power is always in the word. Without the word, there is no sacrament. God has attached the word to those things that our bodies as well as our souls might rejoice in his grace and be touched by his never-ending love and mercy. Who speaks for God today? Pastors, yes, but we do as the church. Well, what is the word that is spoken? And that's perhaps the most important part. The word that is spoken is the same word that God has spoken throughout the ages. It's the word that he gives to us in the scriptures. That's one way that you knew whether a prophet was a right prophet or not, whether he was a good and godly prophet or a false prophet. What he spoke came from beyond this world. What he spoke had to be in accord with what had already been spoken. You see, here is where we learn what God says. And as Lutherans, we know that the Scripture interprets the Scripture. We don't just pluck a couple of verses out and make up our own meaning for it or say what this means to me. We look at the Scripture and we look at all of the verses that talk about that. And we ask, what does this mean for me and in my life? And the Scripture is the one where we will find the answer. And the Spirit of God is the one who will guide and lead us. God speaks a word of warning to anyone who speaks beyond what he has said in Scripture or speaks against what he has said to us in Scripture. But again, remember that the power is in the Word and that the great God of all creation has been gracious enough to you and me to meet us in the midst of our language, in the midst of our life, indeed in Jesus Christ, to meet us in the midst of our sin. As you look at him there on the tree of the cross, it's not just our brother Jesus hanging there. We see him who was made sin for us. Can you believe that? Jesus, the Holy Son of God, Son of God and Son of Mary, our human brother, made sin for us, that sin might be punished and done away with, that death might be defeated, death the result of sin, so that you and I might hear and receive that word of life 
The word of life that God has spoken from creation down through the ages until now. You see, the purpose of the law is indeed to cut away that which is not important and to break our hearts just as our world is broken, to break them open so that the good news of God's love in Jesus Christ can fill us. And filled with that love, as we leave this place, we take the word of God with us. And we take that authority that is of God in his word with us. The word, the revelation is closed. But the application to life is not. And so our Bible study also involves, doesn't it, conversation. How does this word apply to my life? And that must be prayed as well. Lord, how does this word apply to my life? How can we live this out together? The word of God is that power and strength. And he sends it to us in a very simple form. In word and in baptism in the Holy Eucharist. And he does it for one purpose and one purpose only, for cleansing us and giving us life, for reassuring us that we are his own, and that he will never leave nor forsake us, that he is with us in the very midst of life, and he will bring us to the fullness of life, which he has won for us in Christ our Lord. That gracious God, speaks to you and to me, even today. And it is his authority which must be spoken, his authority which accompanies that word. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Please stand as we confess the ancient faith of the Christian church in the words of the Nicene Creed. Together with all God's holy ones of every time and every place, we confess. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come.